Good morning, everyone. My name is Joshua Midalugdog. We all know that precaution is a measure taken in advance to prevent something dangerous, unpleasant, or inconvenient from happening. But specifically today, we are going to talk about the standard precautions and transmissions-based precaution. So all people potentially harbor infectious microorganisms. As such, it must be assumed that all blood and body fluids, body fluid substances are potentially infectious. So standard precautions are the work practices required to achieve a basic level of infection prevention and control. The use of standard precautions aims to minimize and, where possible, eliminate the risk of transmissions of infection, particularly those caused by blood-borne viruses. Standard precautions apply to all patients, regardless of their diagnosis or presumed infectious status. So the standard precautions has key components. There are point of there are point of care risk assessment, source control, hand hygiene, patient placement, patient flow, aseptic technique, personal protective equipment, sharps safety, and visitor management. Let's go first to the point care point of care risk assessment. So the IP is required to educate healthcare provider about the point of care risk assessment and re reinforce its use frequently. By applying the appropriate control measure as determined through the assessment, the healthcare provider can reduce the risk of infection to, pe to themselves, other, other healthcare staff, the patient res or resident, and the visitors. And then the second one is the source control. It involves measure to separate those patients or residents with sim symptoms symptom of virus various transmiss transmissible organisms from those without. So these measures can include spatial separation, whether in separate waiting rooms or the separation of patients by two meters for respiratory illnesses involving the productions of aerosolized droplets and then the third one is the hand hygiene hand hygiene has been uh, identified as the most effective way of preventing the transmissions of healthcare associated infection to patients staff and visitors in all healthcare settings despite the fact that Hand hygiene is considered the most important and most effective infection prevention and control measure. Compliance with hand hygiene protocols by healthcare providers continues to be low. So the hand hygiene have five elements that are important for every healthcare provider to understand. So number one is the indications for hand hygiene. So indications for hand hygiene in, in every healthcare setting, there are certain times that hand hygiene and should can and should be used for the best infection prevention. These select times are also referred to as before and after moments and relate to the two before and after a healthcare provider will come in contact with a patient, resident, or the environment. Then the next element is the hand hygiene Technique. So correct technique is a fundamental part of hand hygiene. There are many things to consider with regards to the correct performance of hand hygiene. And then the next element is the agents used for hand hygiene. A multitude of agents are available for hand hygiene in any healthcare facility type. The agent used in particular location may depend on facility, policy, Price, staff acceptance, type of care performed in the setting, or etc. And then the next ele elements is the hand hygiene policies. 
So every healthcare facility should have a high hand, high hand, hand hygiene policy in place. There may be multiple policies in place that describe different aspects of hand hygiene, such as selecting the agents that will be used, or who is responsible for monitoring compliance. And then the last element is the hand hygiene compliance monitoring. As mentioned before, it is often the responsibility of the IP to monitor for compliance with hand hygiene policies and procedures. It is imperative for the IP to understand the audit process, why is it important, and to whom, how, and when the audit results are provided. So number four key components of standard precautions is the patient placement. So patient placement, single rooms have been shown to lower the healthcare associated infections when there are limited when there are a limited number of single single rooms available, it is prudent to prioritize them for those who have conditions that facilitate transmissions of infectious materials to other persons. And then the next the number five is Patient flow. So patient flow refers to the transfer or transportation of patients or residents either within or outside of the facility as well as individual patient or resident movement. It is necessary to use appropriate precautions when transporting patients or residents. And then the number six is, is the aseptic techniques. Medical and laboratory procedures of any kind are performed under certain conditions and using one of two techniques, the septic versus clean. An awareness and understanding of each will help the IP to distinguish between the two techniques, know when a septic technique is required and when clean technique is acceptable. So number seven is the PPE or the personal protective equipment. It is any type of specialist clothing, barrier product, or respiratory device used to protect the individual from potentially infectious persons, bodily fluids, and excretions or contaminated objects. And then the number eight is the sharps, sharp sh safety and prevention of bloodborne pathog pathogens. Another critical element to consider for both standard and transmission-based precaution is sharp safety and the prevention of bloodborne pathogens. Then the last one is the visitor management. Visitor management is the control of both access and actions of people visiting the patients or residents for the safety, security, and prevention of disease transmission. It is an also an important topic for review and consideration in terms of the implementation of and compliance with precautions. That's all for standard precaution. Now let's move on to transmissions-based precaution. So standard precautions, when applied correctly and consistently, will decrease the chance of transmitting of the majority of infections. However, there are other situations where we require targeted precautions to protect the patient, healthcare provider, visitor, and the environment. These additional precautions are known as transmission-based precautions. It includes the contact precautions, droplet precautions, and the airborne precautions. So, let's talk about first the contact precaution. It prevents the spread of infectious agents by direct and indirect contact and then the droplet precautions are used to interrupt the transmissions of infectious agents that are spread by the droplet route and then the last one is the airborne precautions these are used to prevent the transmissions of infection agents that are spread through the air this is different than droplet in the size of particle and length of time, they remain in aerosolized form.
and then now the difference between standard precaution and transmissions based precaution for me is very simple standard precautions are the work practices required to achieve a basic level of infection prevention control while Transmission-based precautions are used when standard precautions alone are not sufficient to prevent the spread of an infectious agent. For me, I think these both precautions are important. They have the same aim that are needed to fulfill. That's all for the difference of the, the standard precautions and transmission-based precaution. Thank you for listening.